Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a huge severe weather event that'll be taking place across the United States for multiple days. This will bring the risk for damaging winds, large hail, and perhaps even some tornadoes. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast. But let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. And we'll first begin with the central and southern plains. And that's where we've been seeing some severe severe weather over the past 24 hours. Notice there's some convection ongoing today in parts of Arkansas and as well as parts of Texas and even back even through the Midwest. Some showers, some storms. We've seen some severe weather out of this from yesterday with damaging winds and even upwards of three inch hail. Luckily that threat is moving out now. There is still a little bit of severe weather to watch for in parts of Oklahoma and as well as Arkansas through the afternoon but the threat is overall low at this time. Northeast United States we saw a lot of rain there over the past several days with Hurricane Lee and as well as a little disturbance that went through a couple days ago that has moved out and we don't have any rain there anymore it's dry as a bone no rain today should be dry for the next few days and further to the south near florida we actually have a non-tropical system that's going to try to develop over the next several days there's about a 30 percent chance that this becomes a tropical storm but overall it's likely to remain subtropical which will still bring a lot of rainfall right now it is expected to move to the north high winds are expected across the east coast of florida upwards of 40 to 45 miles per hour and then closer to areas like the Carolinas, we'll likely see some heavy rainfall there as we go into the weekend. So this will be something to watch for as it slowly drifts to the north. But again, it's likely to remain subtropical, meaning that this probably will not become a tropical storm. But again, there's a 30% chance it does. Western tier of the United States, not a whole lot of activity here. We got some showers, a couple rumbles of thunder maybe, but nothing too crazy here. You have a low pressure system that's spinning back up here in Canada. This will actually move down to the south and eventually we'll be seeing a low pressure system form over the Rocky Mountains. And once that happens, there's going to be an increased risk of severe weather heading into Friday and Saturday of this week across a large chunk of the Great Plains and perhaps into the Midwest as we go into Sunday and Monday. We'll talk about more details on that here in just a moment. Let's talk more about the weather pattern that's happening here across the United States, because this is really going to be a big deal over the next several days, as we are going to be watching for an increased risk of severe weather, which isn't overly typical for September. We usually don't get any big severe weather events. This one won't be obviously huge in terms of its intensity. The highest risk we have right now is a slight risk, but they are going to be pretty large areas, and this very well could go to an enhanced risk, and I'll show you why here in just a second. But as of right now, we do have a trough that is located in the northwest United States. It's positively tilted. Overall, we do have a high pressure system over in the eastern tier of the United States, so that's keeping areas over there dry and warm. And then our jet stream's a little bit stronger here in parts of the southern plains, and that's actually been able to aid the threat for severe weather in parts of areas like Texas and Oklahoma from yesterday, and as well as today for areas like Oklahoma and Arkansas. Going into late Thursday and Friday, that trough is going to start to move south and east and this will start to move over the rocky mountains strong upper level winds it's a westerly flow and that's what we're going to be watching for is an ejection here over the rocky mountains now this is friday around lunchtime notice it's not really over the rocky mountains yet it's just to the west of like colorado for example once it moves over the rocky mountains that's when the severe weather threat will really start to ramp up so once we go later into Friday and as well as into Saturday morning, notice that trough starts to eject over the Rocky Mountains and into parts of like the Central and Northern Plains. Again, notice that strong area of upper level winds, a westerly flow. We're going to start to see severe weather here on this part of the low pressure system. So right now it doesn't look like Texas will be super impacted by this. Oklahoma might be. It's going to be more of an impact, I think, for the Central Plains and areas just west of the Midwest for Saturday. That's where we're going to be watching for damaging winds large hail and as well as tornadoes and then heading into sunday i think things get a bit interesting because this trough in the upper levels will weaken but i still think there'll be a chance for severe weather across parts of the midwest going into sunday as of now there's no risk of severe weather outlined by the storm prediction center however they have mentioned that there will be a chance that there is a risk issued as we go into future outlook so we'll have to watch that closely and then eventually going into late sunday into monday that trough starts to really just sit there i mean it doesn't really move at all going into late sunday into monday and eventually going into Tuesday it really again doesn't move a whole lot it'll move into the Midwest as we go later into Tuesday but this can allow for multiple rounds of showers and storms across the Midwest which a lot of those could produce some severe weather so I'll have to watch that closely as we get closer but again as of right now it seems to be more of an isolated a scattered severe weather risk for the Midwest as we go into Sunday Monday Tuesday and perhaps even into Wednesday so it looks like maybe a multi-day severe weather event could be on our horizon 
one thing we need to watch for over the next several days is the evolution of the low-level jet. This is what helps to rotate supercells at the lower levels, hence it produces a tornado risk. So we have to watch this closely. Notice Thursday and Friday, we don't really have any organized low-level jet. Going to Saturday, things become more organized. Here's your low-pressure system. We got a south and southwesterly flow. That's usually not a good scenario when it comes to a tornado risk. It usually increases that risk. So we'll have to watch very closely going into Saturday afternoon and evening across this area here. That's where the highest low-level jet values are. That would indicate a bit more of an increased tornado risk. So that's the area there across areas like Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, and as well as Nebraska for an increased risk of tornadoes. Now, it doesn't seem to be high by any means. It's still on the low to medium side, meaning like a 2 to 5% probability from the Storm Prediction Center. Wouldn't rule out a 10%, but it's too early to tell in that end right now. It does look like, though, we'll at least see maybe an isolated tornado threat evolve as we go into Saturday afternoon with the characteristics and environment that we have in place. Now, let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next several days. We'll go day by day, beginning with tomorrow, which is tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday. We'll have a large marginal threat of severe weather. It goes from South Dakota back through areas in Texas. Main concern right now, damaging winds and hail. There's not really any tornado risk out of this because we don't really have any sort of low-level jet. So basically not a whole lot of shear in the environment. Now, going into flying fences Friday, we do have a slight risk of severe weather from South Dakota back into Kansas. This will be one of two days to watch for for at least a low-end threat for tornadoes. I think it's low on Friday. I think our main concerns will be damaging winds and hail across that region. Going into Saturday, that's when things become much larger. We're looking at a larger area for severe weather, hence a huge severe weather event. It's going to be a pretty large area overall. This is going to extend from Minnesota back through Oklahoma. We're going to be watching this area in particular. The area will likely be a bit larger than this, the marginal threat at least, and there might be an enhanced risk. We'll have to see how this evolves again. It's a little bit early to tell whether there will be an increased risk of severe weather to an enhanced risk, but there will at least be some scattered severe weather across this region. All modes of severe weather do appear possible, including damaging winds, hail, and as well as tornadoes. Here's a closer view of that low-level jet going to Friday night. It's not going to be very intense across areas like Nebraska, maybe around 30 knots or so. Again, a southerly flow that's going to at least promote some rotation in the lower levels, might lead to an isolated tornado. But going into Saturday, that's when it becomes a bit more intense. Notice a bit stronger of an area of low-level winds, and that's going to, again, be a southerly and southwesterly flow. That could increase the risk for tornadoes just a little bit, but I think damaging winds and hail will be the main concerns on Friday and as well as on Saturday, but tornadoes are definitely still in play. Two points across this region going to be in the 60s, and that's pretty typical. That'll create some buoyancy in the atmosphere. That'll obviously create some more severe weather potential here. Two points in the 60s going into Friday night. Saturday, that's when two points will rise into the low 70s in some areas. So a lot of buoyancy available going into late Saturday, and that'll again promote an increased risk of severe weather. Dry line setup likely to cause some severe weather for sure going into Saturday. Again, Saturday looks to be the most concerning day as of right now for severe weather. Now, here's the future radar for the next several days. Going into Friday, that's where we'll be watching for severe weather across Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. There could be a capping issue on the southern end of this, so we might not get a whole lot of discrete supercell action on the southern side, and like Kansas, for example. So that'll be something to watch for. But again, going into Saturday, that's our better chance for severe weather. Notice this low pressure system up here. Damaging wind tail and tornadoes being possible across this entire region again from Missouri and Kansas all the way back in areas like Minnesota This likely will not extend into Texas There will probably be capping issues down there So I don't think we'll have any crazy severe weather down there Maybe some damaging winds going into Sunday morning going into Monday There'll be another chance for some showers and storms Maybe some severe weather in the southern plains and perhaps even back up near the Midwest and isolated risk going into Tuesday more showers and storms across the Midwest and eventually going to Wednesday does continue. It doesn't really go anywhere. Going into Wednesday and Thursday, more chances of showers and storms there, and eventually going in toward Friday, I think the threat of severe weather starts to go downhill from there. So that's what we're looking at over the next several days. Stay tuned with us. We'll keep you posted with the latest. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video.